Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here and welcome to DCS World 2.8.7 and Polychop Simulations SA342L Gazelle Module. Welcome to Tutorial 3, Guns and Rockets. Uh, this version of the Gazelle is capable of carrying unguided rockets in the form of the Telson 68mm SNEB. Uh, it's a pod that carries eight unguided rockets of various types. Alternatively, you can carry the GIAT M621 20mm cannon. Uh, and finally, there is a, a new option, I've actually forgotten the name of it, but it's a, a 50 cal uh, machine gun, which you can also mount uh, on both sides, in fact. Yeah, the FN HMP400. Uh, so if you wanted to, you could have this on both sides. Uh, but we're going to go for a more traditional layout, uh, where on the right-hand side we'll carry the 20mm cannon. It can only be carried on the right. Uh, and we have a variety of different ammo types. It can be AP, uh, Combat Mix, uh, HE, Sap Hay, or Combat Mix with a slightly different mix. Uh, I'm going to go High Explosive, just for fun, on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, we're going to choose uh, pretty standard High Explosive Rockets. Uh, so that's our loadout for today. Note, I'm also carrying the Infrared Deflector and the Dipole Antennas. So let's hit OK there and the, the ground crew will load us up, it shouldn't take too long, and I will then demonstrate how we set the helicopter up to be ready to employ those weapons. Uh, so, if we just wait a moment, we should see weapons appear on the helicopter. As the ground crew busily do their business. Uh, the 50 cal is pretty cool, um, because, well, for one thing, it carries 400 rounds, and you can carry two of them. You can have one per side. You can fire them individually or both at the same time. And that's probably quite good against soft-skinned vehicles. Uh, but I'm going to go for the, the heavier punch here in the form of the GIAT. There we go. We're now loaded up. So first thing we're going to take a look at is uh, the weapons control panel down here. We have arming switches which are covered for the left pylon and the right pylon. Uh, so... Uh, in most cases, you're going to leave these off until you're in the target area. If you wanted to have some kind of pre-setup done, you can actually flip both of these on. Uh, note that the right pylon always has priority. So with both switches on, what will happen is the cannon will fire, and then if you turn off the cannon, you can then fire the rockets. This is probably the simplest way to employ the system. Uh, other thing to note, I need to hide my collective there. We have... Uh, Oops, we have another kind of armament control panel below. This is the main power uh, for the weapon system, so I'm going to turn it from Arete to Marche. We then get a readout of a uh, number of rounds. We have eight rockets on the left pylon, and we have 240 rounds of 20 millimeter on the right pylon. So that needs to be on as well. You can adjust this for time of day and such like. Uh, and in the real aircraft, you'd be able to adjust the, the values in these, but they're set by the crew. So that's how that is done. Um, finally, before actually employing the weapons, Master Arm is here in the form of the armament switch. Uh, as soon as you turn that on, trigger is hot. So uh, we probably wouldn't do that until we're ready to actually employ the weapons. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've kind of preset this up. You'll see there's a green light for the right-hand switch. And then if I turn the right-hand switch off, the green light goes to the left. That then means we're ready for rockets. That's the way I would employ it usually, because it just makes things simpler. Also note your gun sight needs to be folded down in order to employ it, and it will not display a reticle until master arm is on, and you'll then get a corresponding reticle. So for takeoff, I'm going to hide the gun sight, and I'm going to leave the master arm off. Okay, let's get airborne and go ahead and employ these weapons, see what it's all about. Um, now, they're not massively accurate. Uh, this is a fixed reticle. We don't have any adjustable depression, uh, so you do very much have to eyeball it. Uh, so let's get going. This thing is uh, not going to be challenging the Apache for accuracy, I'm afraid. Also note that with this loadout, we're quite a bit heavier uh, than we were in the second tutorial where we were uh, demonstrating takeoff. So it's taking me quite a lot more torque to get airborne. Uh, and of course, I'm doing it the silly way. I'm taking off straight up, whereas normally you would actually get it into forward flight. That actually gives you a lot more lift. Anyway, I'm uh, transitioning into forward flight now. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to reduce the torque a little bit as we get some forward speed going. 
And there we go, that's us. Cool, alrighty, so with that done, let's go ahead and flip Master Arm on. Let's go and unfold the gun sight, and we are now ready to employ the cannon initially. So, uh, both weapons are on the trigger, uh, and whichever one has priority, if you have both of them enabled, will be the one that fires. So in this case, it is the cannon. So let's give the cannon a squeeze. That actually, that was pretty close. Like, if you're not very high, and you're not trying to hit a target very far away, the reticle will be fairly accurate. Like I said, this is high explosive. There's a there's some tracer in it. So, actually, if you fire a long enough burst, you'll get the occasional tracer round to give you an indication as to where your rounds are landing. Uh, that's very very useful because you're you're mostly doing this visually. You're mostly using the tracer, in fact, to actually get hits. So, you know, if I wanted to try and hit a further away target, let's come round here and say I want to try and hit the end of this line of trees. Let's see if I can do it. Not too bad. Not too bad. That's about on target. So yeah, you're going to walk it on. <laughs> you're basically going to walk it on. And uh, if we look down at our little panel here, we can see rounds going down. Uh, the, the light, the red light for the trigger goes red when we're firing. And that's how that works. I'm now going to turn off the right hand pylon. And we're now set up for rockets. Now, these are very, very hard to get hits with. Because unlike the gun, we can't really walk it on as much. Because we only have eight rockets to deal with. But say we've got some troops in this uh, little section of trees here. I'm pretty confident I can hit that. If I wanted to make a further shot than that, I'm going to have to aim up above the target a little. So I'm aiming at that house. That was spot on. Okay, right, I'm surprising myself here. I can actually make hits with this. Oh, that, that fell behind it now. Right, let's uh, try and get it on. Not too bad. So anyway, you can see. You can see how this works. Uh, when I'm using the gaz gazelle, actually, I'm tending to uh, use smoke rockets on the left-hand side for marking targets for other units. And I have the Giat um, M62 20mm cannon on the right for actually engaging targets should I need to. Oh, I've set something on fire. Terribly sorry. <laughs> Terribly sorry. Uh, and then to make your system safe, you can turn armament switch off and you can fold away the gun sight. And that's you now safe again. Pulling the trigger now does nothing. And as I said before, if you have both pylons on, the right hand pylon will take priority. So I'm pulling the trigger now, nothing happens. Master arm on. I can now fire, even without the gun sight. So if you wanted, I, maybe there's a mod out there, in fact, that you can have a little bit of Sharpie on the windscreen. Uh, and note in the, in the latest version of the model, you can actually hide the gun sight, should you desire. So you would have the option of uh, maybe putting a little bit of Sharpie on the, on the canopy. Or, or just um, firing from the hip, as it were. That's what that looks like from the outside. <laughs> good fun, good fun. So, there you go, that's how that's done. Um, that is the the guns and the rockets on the Gazelle. I hope you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, or comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. You also have the option of further supporting uh, my channel by joining Deep Hack's Ground Crew. There's a join button below if you'd like to do that. Thank you very much to those of you who've already done so. Thank you Harish Rajan, Byron Farrow, Storm Kimbari, Channel Wright, Mangash, JR Walker, Chandler Hedgewald, Griff Nizzle, Mr. Yeti, Bread, Tier Zero, Erdin Kirtan, Tiger Moto, Sean IM81, Charts, John Bluer, Veli Tapani Korpikanas, Mike Delta, Sergei Dubovic, Ogatai, Hamilton, Frantic Stone, Sandbox Code, Mr. Craptacular, Tog, Kitsune, Rocklin Gaming, Tea Kettle Barbecue, Shmo78, Alex, Colonel Billington, Matt, Fluidity, Jurgen Dressel, Aaron Redman, and Pink Floyd. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.